Hello everyone, welcome back to Cross Slash Game. Evie here with another video. I'm still working on my Returnal Part 2 deep dive, so it's pretty intense, uh, and I'm trying to get it done as quickly as possible, but it's taking me a little bit longer than I expected. But in the meantime, there's been so much stuff happening that I thought I'd make a short video to bridge the gap between my last video and this one. Um, but also, I don't want to drop the ball and, and stop making content for a week because it's just not, not the right thing to do, I guess, if you're trying to keep a channel going. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, it's been a crazy week. The year has just barely started and wow, the controversy around all the woke nonsense just does not stop. Um, we've we've basically had like a long list of uh, games come out since 2023, which are very much from the other side, from the east side of, of the world and uh, between Japan and, and South Korea and, and so on. And for some reason, uh, the Western side is just trying to like sink their claws into into those into those guys, like trying to like expect things from them that they generally are not used to catering, I guess, to to the public in that sense. They'll do whatever they think is right, or whatever the 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 the, the, the development, the design of the of the game actually is. So they'll they'll go through that, but they're not really catering to anyone specifically. So it's kind of annoying when you start seeing all these news pieces around people that work within the industry and or even the general public just you know calling out racism for example and to a Japanese developer for a lack of a game character but the list basically goes through so we've had translation issues uh, so the localizers for some uh, manga anime uh, who do the translation to English from the Japanese uh, are uh, uh, inserting some work ideology in there We've had uh, Tekken 8, so we've had someone on Twitter call Harada a racist because of not being able to, or not putting Eddie Gordo in the starting roster, yet there's like 32 characters in there already of all shapes and sizes and all from all corners of the earth, so I really don't know what this person's saying, but fair play to Harada for sticking to his guns and, and putting that, those people in their place because it's just ridiculous. Um, and lastly, we've had Stella Blade and the uh, woke side saying that she doesn't have a, a realistic body, yet she's designed, or sort of literally designed, off the back of a Korean model. So it, it's really crazy because I've, it, during my kind of stint in, in gaming, I've not really had um, much of these sorts of things. I've not, I've either not paid attention, maybe, maybe it's always been happening, but. To me, it kind of started in 2022, um, before leading up to say all the marketing campaign, leading up to the release of Final Fantasy 16. Um, because whilst there's always been, you know, a couple of bits here and there um, of, of uh, people just talking rubbish, which quickly they've always been ignored. Um, in, in 2022, uh, around September time, we had uh, some uh, guy from Kotaku kind of put. Um, Yoshi P, so the, the producer and director of Final Fantasy 16 on a spot uh, around the lack of uh, people of colour in a predominantly white uh, character based game and so he put him on a spot, the man kind of gave his comments as best he could for, you know, I'm sure he didn't really enjoy that uh, but it was his vision, it's, it's what the, the game was, it's based on specific you know, European medieval times, what not and and that, that's when it kind of sort of dawned on me how much of stuff is out there around this sort of uh, people just calling out Japanese and Korean developers. Um, and one of the things that all, I always go back to now is is kind of this this um, article by Kotaku, and um, it's basically confirming, basically saying we need to start holding Japanese RPGs to a higher standard. And and I think this is kind of where it starts for me. So this is November the 9th, 2022. And I get what he's saying. Like, he, he's the one, this guy, whoever he is, or she, she's the one that interviewed uh, Yoshi P, put him on a spot. He gave the answers, you know, kind of back, just saying this is it, this is what I expect, this is what I, I envisioned, and that's what the game is, and that's it. Um... And and so she went and done, uh, you know, she got a lot of hate for that, um, and uh, she went and done another piece, kind of explaining, you know, why we should be holding uh, Japanese RPGs, I guess, developers to higher standards. Basically, explaining that uh, and putting, you know, 
nice blonde photo of, of Dion here, um, basically saying that they do understand, you know, because she's basically been said, told that um, she, that, that Japanese don't understand racism and they don't understand uh, representation and yada yada yada. And I believe they do. I, I think they're, if anything, much smarter than, than, than most other uh, cultures or, uh, or countries in that sense. They, they do get it, they do understand it, but they just choose not to cater to it because you're you're constantly if you're again it's kind of something i've covered in my last videos if you're being told what to do uh then it's not genuine okay and funny enough final fantasy 16 did have did have some uh representation from other uh cultures and and whatnot um so i i, I just feel like it's all in the context of the story it's all in the context of the video uh of the, of the story and, and and the vision of the of the developer so it, it's really frustrating when this happens because this is november 2022 the game came out in around june 2023 and this just kind of tainted that journey uh for a lot of people because everyone was like oh come on man like why 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 are you dragging them into this so they they like so we're one world i get that but america just has a different mentality to to the uk and 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 the, some of the rest of europe right so um the games that are made in the west are you can see you can just look at them and go this is an american game or a uk based game um depending on whatever you're seeing they the, the, the east side of video games they have a specific look a specific take on things uh, they're very fantastical. They don't tend to take themselves very seriously. Um, and one of the things that this this person mentions is like there's an, an example of uh, um, in the Yakuza 3 2000 line, um, the the protagonist of the action RPG Yakuza 3 realizes that one of his foster children is racist towards another kid for being half black, and he teaches her not to judge people on the basis of their skin. So the thing is, is it it makes sense if you've ever played in the Yakuza game and you know who the main character is he's a predominantly cool guy and he comes from a he's, a, he's an orphan he comes from a, back, from a poor you know background and he he he, uh, he has a kind he's a kind person he's a firm but fair sort of person or character so it goes to show that if he does in the context of any of the Yakuza games if he spots any wrongdoing by anyone he will be the, the first one to put it right um, and and so yeah they created a little side story about that and that's the what this person picked up to suggest that Japanese developers are clearly aware of it and they are but so what so what does that mean so just because they're aware that that should be the focus of the games so we've already established that that doesn't work every time you make the focus of, of a video game representation equality feminism um, any work rubbish basically if you make that the forefront of your game then all of a sudden it, you lose touch with what the game is really supposed to be because you're now just trying to again panda it's, it's, just, it's just ridiculous you're just constantly trying to like transform the story of a game to appease a certain demographic of people who from the left side I'd say who like to see these things and enriches the game for their f from from their perspective fine okay i'm sure there's games out there that will be perfect for you there'll be some woke developers coming out of the woodworks to make these video games for you but these guys are not doing that and i think that's important to understand where they come from their journey they're veterans at this and no i i, I get it oh maybe you know, because they've been doing this for a long time they should know better well yes and no because this isn't something that they should know better this isn't something that they learn when when making video games um, and and in the end of the day it, it comes down to I guess a belief is it, this isn't something that oh it's right it should be right they should be doing it no it shouldn't it's done only in a context of a story it's done if it's part of the vision for that game it's done naturally and organically as expressed in my other video before because they do it all the time but no one's no one talks about it when it's done and you see it and you play it, it's so invisible that you don't even care. You don't go and make an article about that. So if anything, you'll try and find something wrong about it. <sighs> All this to say that we are <laughs> we're on what what day are we? The 9th of January. And uh, and it's so sad to see that 
the the Japanese, the East Side, um, is being attacked by all this woke mentality and ideology, and it's it's really sad to see that these games are not even out yet. Some of these like Tekken 8, uh, Stella Blade, they're, they're just not even out yet. They're still in development and and hopefully be out soon. I wouldn't be surprised if Final Fantasy VII Rebirth gets some rubbish soon, or you know gets attacked somehow. Um, but it taints the journey. It, 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 the journey that these developers have had, all the work behind it, it just taints the hard work that they've put into making these games. Um, and ultimately, I, I, I don't want to live in a world where Harata was forced to do something that he didn't want to do. Not only that, again, as I just said, there's plenty of different colours and cultures in Tekken, the Tekken roster. There's 32 characters, but yet this one person kicked up a storm. On, on Twitter X and called him out as racist like that is disgusting that is disgusting and from the left side if you actually believe that if you guys you know oh he's right he's right as a racist then you're a d he, no one will ever listen to you okay no one will ever listen to you if Takken had just a roster of white people then maybe I'd say yeah sure but it's not it's always been diverse so anyway that's all I wanted to say for this video, sorry I've rambled on for a little bit. Uh, but I always, every time these things are happening, and, and this is where this article from November 9th, or 9th of November 2022 is where it started for me, it's when I started noticing that they're attacking a lot more these, these Eastern development companies. Um, and I think it's because there's been a great influx from 2023 into 2024 of Japanese and Korean games really. Um, so yeah, what are they going to write about? They're going to write about them. They're going to try and bring them down. God knows why. Um, in any case, let me know what you think. Let me know what you what, what you think about these situations. Um, I didn't really go into the, the whole localizer thing because it's to do with manga and anime. But it is again, it's just ridiculous. Um, the Stellar Blade thing also ridiculous. I don't. Yeah, Mary Jane. She's the she's the cream de la creme, isn't it? She, she's what I want to see in a video game going forward. Anyway, guys, um, thank you for listening, thank you for clicking on this video, I hope you enjoyed it, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao.